Shall we begin? Let's begin now. It's a great day, and I really missed you guys last week, and I'm so grateful for what um, you did last Sunday, the Day of Beauty, and the way you touched people's lives. And, um, day of Beauty's not over. Every day's a Day of Beauty, if you choose to make it one. So make sure that you're touching somebody's life in a way that um, makes a difference for them. And I promise you it'll make a difference for you too. This morning we're going to continue with our series, um, Living Grace in a Graceless World. You don't have to look very far to find out. There's not a lot of grace around. Um, just open up your news app or whatever and you'll see it. The world's a mess. But we've been given a gift and the gift of grace. And this month, we're looking at ways that we choose grace. Um, we're looking at four different doors this, this month that lead us either to grace or to disgrace, depending on what we choose. Um, and this morning, Pastor Amber is going to come and bring the word, and I'm so excited to hear what Jesus wants to say to us through her. Are you? Yes. 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 Well, let's honor Pastor Amber as she comes to share the word this morning. Good morning, beautiful people. Good morning. I don't know what's up in the atmosphere on today, but I'm going to demand it to leave right now. Like, I just feel like everyone's heavy. I, I'm a little heavy. I, I didn't wake up really heavy. Um, I've been really excited about this word, but just reading the news and things this morning, I instantly started to feel heavy. Um, during worship, I felt a sense of heaviness, so I'm, I'm just hoping that whatever's going on in your life right now, in your mind right now, in your hearts right now, that I'm that God just come in and, and over and smother it with grace and, and love and peace Amen. and joy um, so that we can truly receive what he has for us on today. Don't let your, your issues, your problems, whatever you're going through, get in the way of what God has for you on today. Can you make that promise with me? Yes. 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 That's the promise that I'm going to make to myself. I hope that you, um, that you mean it with me. Because um, the word today is... It's a personal word. This word, when you receive this word today, you're not going to be thinking about your brother, your sister, your mama, your friends, your mate, none of that. You, it's a personal word. It's all for you. Um, as Pastor Tony said, we're talking about living grace in a graceless world. <clears throat> that is, that's bittersweet to me. <clears throat> sweet because of grace. <laughs> Grace is, is uh, amazing, it's beautiful, it is sweet, it is for me, it is for you, and I thank God that I can have grace um, every moment of my life, and then that graceless world part comes in, and that's, that's, that's so bitter to me because that's our reality. Uh, we live in a graceless world, but thank God we have grace. So as soon as I saw that this was going to be our topic for this month, I really got excited about it. I wasn't the only person that got excited about it. It was a lot of people commenting on the on the posts in our, in our group. Um, exciting topic. And today we're going to talk about the the doorway to hunger. Um, that that's the the already laid out topic for today. The doorway to hunger. And what's important about this series of grace in a graceless world is that. Um, we really have to, to con contrast the natural with the spiritual. So as I go through the sermon today, I wanted to make a, a huge disclaimer in the beginning that we're going to talk about a lot of natural. Um, so in that natural, we're not going to talk a lot of Jesus. So bear with me because the first probably about 10, 15 minutes of the sermon, you're not going to hear much about Jesus, but it's because I'm using something to compare to the spiritual. Um, I get a little eerie when I'm sitting in an audience and uh, a preacher is preaching and they don't mention Jesus a lot. Like, that's not what I come here for. Um, so, bear with me. He's coming and he's going to come big and he's going to take over. But we're going to talk about the natural a little bit in the beginning. Um, okay? Deal? Go with me? You're going to follow? A um, <clears throat> couple more things before we get into the natural part. Just dealing with grace for me personally, I haven't always been able to receive grace. 
Um, I haven't always put myself in the position to receive it fully. I haven't always put myself in the mindset to believe that it was for me. And it, it, it took me a long time to really get to that place. <clears throat> and even when I got there, sometimes I still, y'all heard me say this before, I still limit grace. I still said, okay, it, it can be for this situation, but it can't be for this situation. It can be for this day, but it can't be for that day. <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge us all to change our mind when it comes to grace. Because that's what it is. It's a mindset. When you know that you know that you know that grace covers you, you have to keep that mindset in your head. And you can, um, I feel like you can truly conquer a graceless world when you know in your mind that grace is with you, it's for you, and you're living in it, and you can live it out. Amen? Amen. Okay, so let's get to hunger, the doorway to hunger. I, when I read that topic, I had to text my pastor. I was like, what? <laughs> the doorway to hunger? First of all, last, anybody that was at my last sermon, you, I talked about food, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got to talk about food again? It ain't but so many times I can talk about food and y'all not think that I like to eat or something. <laughs> it ain't but so many times that you, I can talk about food and y'all look at me and be like, she likes to eat. <laughs> but it's not me this time. It's not me this time. It's really the, the design topic for the day is hunger. So I kind of have to talk about food again, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, don't be thinking I'm greedy, y'all. We're going we're gonna to talk about... Um, <laughs> We're going to talk about hunger. <laughs> what is... <laughs> don't be laughing at me. <laughs> what is hunger? What is what is it to be hungry? Um, anybody want to throw out a definition before I give the official definition? I heard all of it. I'm trying to think how it's water to settle. Hmm? Self-centered? Well, water to settle. So feeding the soul, okay. To what? Satisfaction. Satisfaction, that's a Craving good word. Craving and nourishment. Craving and nourishment, that's a good word. Okay, good words. All right, the, the book definition for hunger is a feeling of discomfort or weakness caused by lack of food coupled with the desire to eat. Um, feeling discomfort or weakness caused by the lacking of food, coupled with the desire to eat. Um, some words that y'all said was a uh, lack of satis satis satisfaction. Okay, satisfaction, um, crave. What else do you say besides crave? Craving nourishment. Nourishment, okay. Um, some other words that mean hunger or can be synonyms are malnourishment. Um, crave was a word that I wrote down, empty. Undernourishment, that's a good word, I think that's good, undernourishment, yeah. and I desire, I desire something when I'm hungry, that's a great word as well. To be hungry, so let's talk in the natural, so follow me through the natural. Uh, I, have, I have some issues when it comes to, to the way that I eat. <clears throat> um, I'm a very, very busy person. My day starts at about, my clock goes off, my alarm clock goes off at 4.45, and I cannot miss that alarm anymore because I've changed my schedule from 6.30 now to having to be at work at 6. So I have to get up at 4.45 and um, work a 10-hour day, get off at 4.30, and I have a gym full of kids waiting for me at 5 o'clock that don't leave till 9 o'clock at night. So <laughs> my day is non-stop all day long and throughout that day I don't always eat well just because food is probably the last thing on my mind and I don't have a lot of time for it so sometimes I can go throughout the day and only eat about twice a day um, and that's enough for me in my mind you know, I, I got two meals in today that was good <laughs> but um, it's not it's not the best way of eating and I really don't choose to eat until I'm completely hungry, maybe have a, a hunger headache is what my family call it, get a little dizzy or weak and I'm like okay yeah it's time, it's time to finally eat something and even in that time we usually don't choose to eat the right things right? right. Um, so, so my eating is all screwed up, it, it's just terrible. 
And then let's say um, I want to try to start eating better. I want to go on a diet. I talk with a, a, a food nutritionist, tr nutritionist. I talk to a trainer or a doctor and they give me a food plan. And um, have anybody ever had a food plan before? No. Y'all don't? Oh, okay, Joe. Y'all, what's, what's wrong with y'all? <laughs> y'all got this all figured out or y'all just don't care? You got it all figured out. <laughs> huh? I plan to eat. You plan to eat. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, Joe, on the food plan, what, about how many meals was your plan? Five, Five meals. Good job. I think you're here for a reason. <laughs> Five minutes is the only one that does the right thing around here. <laughs> um, this corner over here, shout out. Um, five meals are usually on that, that food plan. And I do not do well with that, with that diet plan that my doctor or whoever might give it to me. Because I don't have the time for five meals a day. I don't have the time to plan five meals a day. I don't have the discipline to say I'm gonna stop and eat at this time and this time at this time. I have a coworker, like she literally preps all her meals, have them all in, in her little container, and uh, at the same exact time every day, she eats at the time that she's supposed to eat. I'm like, how do you do all that? Like, you, how are you even hungry? And how do you have, like, how are you making yourself think, this is the time of the day that I'm supposed to be eating every single time. It's gonna slip my mind because there's so many other things on my mind, but I've watched her transform her life truly in, in size and in the natural and in, in health wise, um, I, I know she's lost 100 pounds already. Oh, wow. Um, just, I mean, she's, she's so dis, I mean, we, we have potlucks at work, the company feeds her sometimes and she just refused to eat those things because she already has her life planned out. Her, she's disciplined in eating the right things at the right time. Um, so, my point in, in saying those things is that usually, I'm, when I don't eat correctly, I'm lacking the nourishments that I need from food. Um, <clears throat> I'm waiting to the last minute and I'm putting myself in a very difficult and tough situation. Have you ever been so hungry that you, you don't even have a desire to eat anymore? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're gonna eat. Well, I, for me, there's sometimes when I get so hungry, I know I still I'm still hungry, but like my my taste buds ain't working the same no more, or something like this. It don't even taste good no more. I don't even want to eat it. Like I, I struggle with that. Maybe that's just my story, Edgar. We're not talking to you. This is important. <laughs> but when we put ourselves in that position, we put ourselves in in a in a situation of um, maybe not even desiring to eat anymore because we have allowed ourselves to get so hungry. Um, but let me, let me tell you about this diet and the few times that I've been able to do it right and what was required of me. Um, uh, it's been only a few times that I can get it right and I only get it right for about a month and a half and then I fall off. Um, but I hope that's, that's not what we do when it comes to the spiritual when we relate this in a little bit. But this is a part of the sermon where you can maybe jot down a note or, um, or keep it in your head. I feel like for a healthy way of eating, um, of satisfying your hunger, eating to keep yourself full and not eating because you're empty. It, it's going to require some things to do these, this diet plan, this, these five meals. It's going to require some discipline. That's, that's one note that I, I would make. Um, it requires discipline to say, I'm going to do this, and I'm not going to let anything deter me and waver me from, from doing what I know that I'm supposed to do, from doing what's best for me. I'm going to discipline myself. It's going to require some planning. It's going to re require some planning for some tough situations. Let's say I'm, I'm out on the road or I got caught up in traffic or maybe I got to stay later at work than I planned on it. I'm going to, I'm going to have to plan some snacks for some emergency or something like that. Have you ever did that in your diet? Maybe, no. Okay. Protein shake. Okay. Well, that still works too. That, that's still a plan to have when you're in a tough time. So you're going to have to 
do some planning, prepare uh, some food prep. You're gonna have to sacrifice some things. You're gonna have to, it requires sacrifice when you do the right things and put, put yourself in the right situation to get the most nourishment that you can out of your natural food and the things that's good for your body and your health. It's also gonna require a desire. I think that's most important. It's at the end of my list, but I think it's most important. It's gonna require a desire because the, the definition told us that lack of food coupled with the desire to eat. Because you can have all the food in the world if you don't have a desire to eat it, then uh, it's no good for you because you don't want it. So um, why does a diet or dieting work for us? Because it puts us back in position to be the best healthy you that you can be. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the, maybe the reason why many of us in the room do not do diets is, is maybe because of one of the, the four things that I mentioned. Maybe you don't have the discipline, maybe you don't have the time to plan, or you don't want to put the sacrifice in, or maybe you just don't have the desire. I saw a lot of heads, and it just looked like, y'all don't, don't have a desire to do it. Well, that's, that's okay, I guess. You know, it might be okay today, but maybe not in a, a few years when you go to those doctor's appointments. But, um, and it might be okay today in the spirit, but uh, it might not be okay in a couple of days or, or when you hit that tough place in life or we're going to get to those things when we talk about the spirit aspect of, of um, satisfying your hunger, becoming satisfied when you're hungry. Um, it leave you nourished, filled, and satisfied. Amen? Amen. So let's, let's transition a little into... <coughs> Jesus talk. The good stuff. The good news, right? right. Yeah. The good news. Um, you can't talk about grace without talking about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, when you get to know him, you get to know grace. And when you get to know grace, you, you truly get to know that he's for you and you gain confidence in that. And you can, you can go out in this graceless world being full of grace. Being full of grace for yourself, for your mind, and when you're full of grace, hopefully you become full of boldness because we live in a world that, that don't need, is that a hand? Yeah. Okay. Um, call me crazy, but what is grace? What is grace? Okay. Well, actually I got some scripture. Can you give me just one second? We're going to get right to it. Matter of fact, let's just go ahead and get, get to it. Okay. Let's just do that for your question. Um, I just like to say Jesus is grace, but um, you know we could not overcome this world on our own, as our own. As I am, I was not good enough before Jesus. That's what the law said, and that's that's what God pretty much said at that time. Um, but He got to a place where He, I, I feel like He didn't want to keep, He didn't want to lose us. He didn't want to let us go. He didn't want to leave us in a hopeless world. And, um, and he came up with a solution. And his solution was, I have to give my son so that my children can have life and have it more abundantly. Um, Grace in Romans 5, 10, it says, you got a pen or something so you can write this down? Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask no question and not wait for the answer. <laughs> In Romans 5 10, it says, For if while we were God's enemy, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more have been reconciled shall we be saved through his life? Jesus rec reconciled us through grace. When we were enemies with God, he gave his life so that we can be friends of God, so that we can be children of God. Um, he reconciled the relationship that was supposed to be broken because we were not good enough. As we are, we cannot be good enough, but thank God for grace because as I am, I am good, good enough. Somebody needs to say that in this room. 
As I am, I am good enough. As I, I am, am, I am good, good enough. Oh, okay. Well, thank y'all. <laughs> thank y'all because that's what grace does for us. As I am, I am good enough. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, God made him who is no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. God gave his son who was blameless, um, with no spots, with no issues, with no problems, um, no sin, and he allowed him to wear our sin so that we could be blameless. That's grace. He became sin for us. In 1 Peter 18 and 19, it says, For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver and gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish. Grace redeemed us. Um, yeah, it redeemed us. When, when we had no abilities, one thing that I like to say, and, I, and you just got me going kind of deep into it, but when I talk about grace, uh, I think Lisa kind of feels the same way because she talks about it too. But before Jesus, before grace, it required someone else going before God for us because we, we had so many issues and so many problems, and it took what they called a perfect person, even though that person probably wasn't perfect at all, but a... Uh, um, a pharaoh or, or someone in a very high religious position to go into the temple and before before um, the, the priest for us, basically. Um, but because of Jesus, when Jesus died on the cross, he said the, the veil of the temple is torn. And when that veil of the temple tore, it allowed all of us access to God. All of us can go run into him and we, we can get in. And I have a scripture later that, that kind of um, paints that picture for us as well. But does that answer your question? Another question? Okay, I don't know if I'm prepared for this one. I just got lucky on that one. For me, the simplest definition of grace is it's when you, when you get something you don't deserve anytime. Mm -hmm. Whether yeah. that be Jesus died for you and he's offering you eternal life, that's grace. We don't deserve it. Absolutely. Or whether it be that jerk that cuts you off in traffic has a flat tire later and you stop and help because we don't deserve that, mm -hmm. but we're going to show grace. Right. And that's different than mercy because mercy is when you don't get something you do deserve. So with Christianity, Jesus died for me. I have to say, I'm a Christian. I'm going to heaven. That's grace. I don't deserve that. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm a Christian, I'm not going to go to hell. That's mercy because I deserve that absolutely. And now I don't get what I deserve. Oh, that's good. I like that. Anybody tweet that? Tony? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jason. Um, let's see. Okay, so so we know we know that Jesus now, right? Have you always known Jesus to be that that beautiful image or, or have you heard him to be something hard and tough and and something we can't really get to? I hope that's not what you've been through in life, but but that's the true image of Jesus, grace. Um, he he reconciled our relationship with God. He redeemed us, and he became sin for us, so that we have a chance. We have a complete, total chance at at, at winning in this world. Um, okay, so let's move on into. The spiritual aspect of, of being hungry or having a hunger. And let's look at our notes of, of the natural. And let's think about the natural. Um, for me, at a, at a place in my life, I like to use me as much as I can just to let y'all know that I'm not just a, a preacher 
or, or somebody that, that learned this, but I, I'm truly a witness um, because I know because I've been through these things. Um, there was a part of my life <clears throat> where I only craved Jesus in the tough times. Can anybody relate to that? Yeah. Um, and it wasn't truly a crave. It was just like, I know that this is what I'm supposed to need right now because I, I don't know anything else. I don't know any help of my own. I don't know how to help myself. And I know he's helped. So um, I call on Jesus right at the, right in the face of the mountain that I got to face or right down in the in the valley of heartache and trouble and trials and tribulations and um, storms of life, those were the times that I, I chose to go to God. Um, I chose to ask for help. I chose to attempt to build some type of relationship because everything that I knew was no longer working for me. Um, it was false hope, it was false promises, and I needed something that works and that's real. So in, in those situations, because trouble don't last always, because trials don't always come, I found myself only calling on Jesus in the times where there was a need. Just like I ate in times where there's a need only. Um, I don't think that's fair. I don't, and if I look at a real life relationship, friendship, whatever ship, um, those aren't fun, right? When you have a friend or someone in your life that only calls on you when they have a need, that only picks up the phone and they're like, oh my God, I'm dealing with this again, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, where you been for the last three, four months? Oh, life was good. <laughs> and, and when I get those calls, I get a little upset. I don't deal well with it. And I don't always bring my best to that relationship, to that friendship, because you know, I feel like you're using me. I feel like you only see me for a need or or something to fill a void and I, I'm usually still sitting on the couch as I'm getting the call and I'm not rushing to you because you've waited too long to try to build up this relationship. Where, where were you all throughout the times that, that we were supposed to be building up a, a friendship? Um, so that's how we do Jesus sometimes. We only go to him one or two times a week, one or two times a month, one or two times a year when there's a need. And in situations like that, just like in the natural, we don't get our full nourishments of food, we don't get our full nourishment of Jesus and the relationship that we can have with him when we're only going to him in, in a time of, of need when he's available for us at all times. I serve a God, thank God I serve a God and I know a God who's always available for me. I don't have to schedule an appointment, I don't have to just, I don't, I don't max out on the amount of times that I can spend time with him. Let's stop treating Jesus like he's only there to, um, to fill up an empty space. But let's let him remain in, in, in a portion of us so that we never go empty again. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, Stay to be full and, and, and stay to remain in relationship with Jesus. It, and when we, look at, when we look at it that way, when we're choosing Jesus and remain full in him for our fullness, and not just because we're empty, when we look at it that way, it might, it might make... We might have to do some sacrificing in that aspect. We might have to re to apply the tools that we talked about in the natural, require some discipline, require some planning, <laughs> require some, um, some sacrifice and some desire. I might have to discipline myself to say, I'm, I'm going to do a little Jesus time right now. And I like to listen to a lot of music when I'm at work. One day this past week, I found myself, I was, it was already about 2 o'clock in the day, and I've been listening to music all morning long that had nothing to do with Jesus. And I'm like, I haven't taken any Jesus time yet. And sometimes for me, that just required me to stop what I'm listening to and put on a sermon or, or some, just some worship songs or something like that. I have to discipline myself to say, 
enough of, of the other things, but I need something that's going to fill me up, something that's going to change my life, something that's going to work for me when I might go later, when I might be on my way home and deal with a little uh, traffic. <laughs> I might need something that reminds me of Jesus. <laughs> because I don't always think like Jesus when I'm stuck in traffic. Um, but when we, when we discipline ourselves to put ourselves in the best position that we can be to overcome a graceless world, we become filled with grace. It might require some planning and some sacrifice, but more than anything, it requires the desire. It requires the desire to say, enough is enough. I've had enough of this. I've been through enough of that. I need Jesus more than just on my bad days. I'm going to stop turning to him only when I'm empty, but I'm going to keep him with me so that I remain full and filled with grace. Um, that's going to require some desire. And without the desire, then... It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough roaming through a graceless world. You're going to always be hungry. You're going to always be thirsty, and you're going to always continue to fill yourself with things that aren't for you. For me, in the natural, usually those times where I'm completely hungry and I'm driving home, and uh, I'm just not, I don't have dinner prepped or planned at the house, so I have to stop at fast food, right? right. We eat a lot of fast food, or at the you know, maybe I don't have money for fast food, so I'll go to the house and throw in a frozen dinner. Or maybe I just got a candy bar sitting in my glove compartment and I grab a candy bar. None of those things are true nourishments for my, my natural body. It's all fake. It's all pretend. It's all, it all is preserved to allow me to get through the moment, but it don't allow me to get through my life. You have some of those things in your life? Some of those people that you might have relationships with, that you might have uh, friendships with. Um, you know, even for some of us, it's our job. We, we use our job as those boys. Uh, we use substance, these things that we're allowing ourselves to be filled with to overcome a graceless world does not work. <laughs> for some of us, it's religion. Not relationship, but religion. Um, it don't work, and we're never filled. We're never truly filled. We put ourselves in, in worse position. When I grab that fast food, that candy bar, I'm putting myself in a worse position than I was before I even started. I'm using fake things to become my grace for, for temporary moments, and it's not truly gonna, it's not gonna allow me to survive by just holding on to those things and calling them something that's satisfying my, my spiritual hunger at that moment. It don't work. You agree? Yeah. Or am I not making any sense? You're making, making perfect. I thought so too, because I was like, oh! <laughs> I've been using a lot of fake things to try to satisfy me, and, and it just don't work. It don't, it don't work. Um, so we have to have that desire there, the, the definition again. Anybody remember it word from word? No. Okay, I don't know if I do either. <laughs> I just got to be the first word I got. Okay. A feeling <laughs> or of discomfort and weakness caused by lacking of food. Nourishment. Huh? Or nourishment. Yeah. Coupled with a desire to eat. There you go. Coupled with the desire to eat. Lacking food, coupled with the desire to eat. Okay, let me give you a, a great word. There's no lack in grace. Amen. It is sufficient. Mm -hmm. It is available. It is limitless. It is sufficient for you. So we can't say that we're lacking grace here. But what we might can say is that it's not coupled with the desire. Do you have the desire to truly put yourself in the best position to get the best nourishments from Jesus, from a relationship with him, to, to be able to live a full of grace life in this graceless world. The grace is not lacking, but maybe your desire is what's lacking. It has to be coupled together. Grace is available for you. Jesus is available for you. 
in Matthew 5, 6, it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. A lot of us know that scripture, right? Mm -hmm. For they will be filled. There is no lack in grace. It is available for you. They will be filled when they have a hunger and thirst for righteousness. In John 6, 35 through 40, it says, Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I tell you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. That's a grace word. Mm -hmm. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will who, of him who sent me, that I shall not lose none of all those he have given me, but raise them up in, at, at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. That is a grace world, a grace word in a graceless world. Amen. To know that <laughs> Jesus is, is he's for me, and when I when I believe and when I receive, he will not drive me away. And he's not on just his mission, but he's on the mission of our Father, of God. He said, this is not my will, but this is the will of him who sent me. It's that big, it's that great. And he, he's, he's desiring all of us if we just have that same desire. Grace is available for me, and Jesus is available for me. Where is your desire? Not your need, but your desire. What are you hungry for? That's the question today. What are you hungry for? What do you desire truly for, for your spiritual well-being? The same time that I apply to some of these things, and I got a lot of desires in life. Amen? I got a lot of desires, and I put some energy <laughs> towards those desires. I put a lot of thought to them. I put a lot of preparation to it. I put a lot of... I sow for those things, I pray for those things, I look for those things. There's a lot that I put into desire. And if you're thinking of something right now, and that thing's not Jesus, then that's the thing that you're hungry for. But will you be hungry for Jesus? Will you be hungry for grace? Will you be hungry for something that will, will not leave you dissatisfied and empty? Will you be thirsty for water that will never run dry? Will we apply these tools to a better relationship with God? Because I, I, I'm telling y'all, I told y'all in the beginning, I, I read stories this morning, one particular story. I talked to Pastor Tony before I came out here because I seen another report um, there was a, a shooting at a nightclub in, in Orlando last night over in the morning, 2 o'clock this morning. And as I was up studying over in the morning, I saw the CNN flash on my phone about 5 o'clock this morning. And um, it was 20 people dead and 20-something injured. And right before I go in here, to post, I was supposed to read over my notes again, but CNN was on my phone again. And it's 50 dead and 56 injured. Wow. That's a graceless world. That's a world that if, if I let the, those thoughts overcome my mind, then I'm going to truly feel hopeless. I'm going to feel like that the enemy has overcame this world. But good news, right? Because when we truly dine with Jesus daily, when we continue to place him in our daily walk, when we spend time with him, when we worship, when we sing praises, when we pray and study and all this don't take much. It don't require much. In, in your meal prep, there are small meals, right? It's, not, it's nothing big. It's nothing major, but, that, but it keeps you satisfied. You never truly feel hungry. Those are the things that we have to do with Jesus throughout our daily lives and our daily walks with him 
so that when we get this bad news, when we see this bad news, we can still know that grace rules the world because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. There's grace for God so loved the world. Let that drown out this graceless world. Let that be the thing that, that we remember more than anything in those hopeless times with the worship band come before us and, and, and uh, get ready to close out for us. So, what are you hungry for? What do you have the desire for? What is, what is your need on today? And are you filling those voids in your life with, with things that do not give you eternal hope? Are you filling those things with, with, um, with false hope on today? Maybe there, there's someone in the room. Would y'all all stand with me? Maybe there's, there's someone in the room, and, and this is all personal to yourself in your own space. It's not going to require anything. But maybe you've been going through life um, empty. Maybe you've been empty. Maybe you've surpassed that place of hunger and thirst, and maybe you're at starvation. The definition of starvation is for you die because of hunger. Maybe you're spiritually dead on this morning. Maybe you've been going through life the past few weeks, the past few months, maybe even the past few years, spiritually dead because you're not filling yourself up with Jesus, with grace. Maybe you're using every and any and all things else that there is that, that you're calling yourself filled with, but maybe you're still truly spiritually empty. God is a God that says, I will meet you where you are. You don't have to, if, if, you, if you just stretch out your hands right now in this time, or you open up your heart right now in this time, he, he says, you don't have to run to me, I'll run to you. I'll meet you where you are. I'm here for you and I will come rescue you and we can start this thing right today. <laughs> One thing I do before I start dieting is I take a moment um, to detox my body about two days of detox. And when I do a detox, I get rid of all the toxins and the things in my body that has overcame my, my, my body at that time, my life, my health. And I try to rid those things out so I can start fresh, a fresh new start on my diet. This morning, maybe it's time for you to detox. Maybe it's time for you to get in position to have a fresh new start with Jesus so that you can be filled with grace, not because you're well, because you're empty at this moment, but you can continue to fill yourself throughout the day so that you can remain full and satisfied in Him. Would you open up your hearts this morning and say, Jesus, I need you. I promise you He'll be there for you.